Hello guys, in today's tutorial we'll be making uh, simple enemies like the Gombas in Super Mario and first thing we're going to do is import those Gombas into our sprites folder and as always I've made the art it's over here and, and it's available for download in the description and we're going to just like we did with all the other sprites uh, we're going to set some things, which is sprite mode to multiple, here to point, true color, and here in the pixels to units, set it to 10 because each of these little guys is 10 by 10. And create a 10 by 10 and slice and apply. And now we've got our little guys over here. And drag the first four into our scene. The first four, not all of them, just the four. The first four ones. And create an animation called Simple Enemy uh, Walk. And we're going to change its velocity because right now it's a bit quick. And how do we do that? Well, just go into our animator window, click on simple enemy walk. Make sure before you do this, make sure that you've got your enemy selected. Then go into animator, simple enemy walk, and set its speed to maybe half of it, 0.5 speed. Let's see how that works out. Yep, I think that's fine right for now. And now that we have that done, we need to make another animation, which is the death animation so simple enemy dead and what that animation will be is simply this sprite over here where enemy is all pumped down as you can see and here in the animator we're going to make some transitions actually only one that goes from enemy walk to enemy dead and that transition will be uh, set to true set will be happen when one variable will be set to true so in the parameters create a variable called stomped so if the enemy is stomped is stomped then it will die it will play the death animation with this done we're now first we're going to change from this to simple enemy And with that done, you can also change its sprite render sprite to to this so, so that it's better visible. This won't change any, anything in the code or in the animations. It will still play the walk animation by default as you can see. Anyways, now we're going to handle the, the walking of our player. But first, for our player to walk, he has to have colliders. So we're going to add them. To add to it a rigid y 2 d with a fixed angle, and we're going to add it two colliders, two 2D colliders, one that's a circle that will be in the bottom half, in the bottom half of our player. It will be like this, we're going to make it this way so that our enemy can go through ramps without being stuck and we're going to also add a new another collider which is a box collider and we're going to make that collider stay only in the top part of our player like this and this way uh, stuff can still stand in on top of the player without stand without sliding to the sides because instead of being just a circle collider has a box collider which is plain on the top and now let's create some code create a new script called simple enemy enemy script it's creepy <laughs> 
I guess it can be that. Now we're going to make our player walk, and so he needs a velocity, and we're going to create a float variable for that velocity. Velocity, and we're going to set it by default for one. And here on the update function, we're going to access the rigid body to the component of our player and edit and access its velocity and set it equal to a new vector 2 where the x will be equal to the velocity and the y will be equal to whatever it is y velocity so so we can simply copy this and paste the dot y after it close parenthesis and I you know our player will be always walking to the to the right and now we're going to handle its collisions because this isn't working for us our player can't just do that one of the ways to to detect collisions is with a thing called raycasts uh, so this is our enemy and we're going to create a line over here and if that line collides with something for example with this block over here then our player will turn around and go the other way and let's do that this kind of line over here is called a ray cast or a line cast we're going to use line cast because they are more precise and what that requires is two points so we're going to create two public variables transform called uh, site start and site end and as I said those kind of lines return true or false so we're going to create a variable to return to store that value which is public bool colliding colliding so in the update function we're going to type colliding equals physics to the dot line cast and as you can see over here, that line cast requires two, var two values. And the first one will be the site start dot position. And the second will be the site end site end dot position. Close this up. Put a semicolon there. And we're going to also create a uh, void on draw gizmos function so void on draw gizmos where we'll make it visible those that line that we are going to create here so gizmos dot color equals color dot magenta you can change to it to other color I just find this one legit and we're going to create a gizmos dot draw line and as it as you can see it also requests for two values and that's what, what we're going to do is copy this ones over here to here and if you go into unity you can see that when we create Two points. Uh, put them into our player, into our enemy. And for example, this point over here can be over here, and this point over here can be over here, just like in the drawing. And in the simple enemy, just drag those limb objects, each one of them, to a site start, and the other to site end. And we can see that. A line appears in our scene view, which is the line that makes our player detect stuff. So right now our player will still simply go to the right, 
uh, to change that we're going to make one if clause over here to make that if colliding if that line is colliding with something so if colliding then we're going to make the player turn around and to do that just use transform dot local scale and set it equal to a new vector two because the scale right now is one 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 and to turn it around in the horizontal axis all you have to do is to change the x to minus one as you can see and we're going to do that in the code by multiplying the transform dot local scale dot x by minus one and we're going to set the other the y scale to be the same and one thing that we also need to do is to change the velocity to be in reverse so velocity times equals minus one semicolon and right now this should be working quite okay if we play when our enemy goes into this and into that you can see that it's it moves but there's still one problem it, because we don't want him to collide into the switch because it would actually we, it can collide but it would be more interesting if it wouldn't and to make that work we need to change a bit of our code here in the colliding physics line cast thing line cast thing by adding a new layer mask we're going to call it detect what and create that layer mask here in the top public layer mask detect what and basically when I go into our scene here in the simple enemy script that layer mask over here that we just created the detect what is going to define what the hell that line cast over there considers that is something worthy to change rotation so for example this this block over here is on the ground layer so in the in that detect what layer mask we want it to detect the ground now do we want it to detect the player of course not because we want our enemy to go into the player basically we want to make it detect everything except the player and this layer over here which is the ignore raycast layer but uh, uh, right now we haven't done nothing we haven't changed the thing all i have to do now is to go onto the switch and change its layer from default to the layer ignore raycast and right now the enemy will ignore that switch and go on to the block as you can see right now uh, if we add more players you can see that they will work fine just like the Goombas in Mario <laughs> pretty funny one other thing that our enemies could collide with is this door trigger over here that right now isn't even being used but it's still over here and so to change it also to ignore raycast to make our player not collide with it and not go all freaky I think that's it for today guys in the next tutorial I'll be showing you how to make the the collisions with our player because that will be a bit a bit more complex so see you there